A 1 microfarad capacitor with an initial stored energy of 0.5 joules is discharged through a 1 mega ohm resistor. A. What is the initial charge on the capacitor? So we would need an expression that relates the stored potential energy on the capacitor, which is symbolized by U, to the capacitance, which is given and symbolized by C. Now, fortunately, we have this relationship from an earlier chapter. We can see that the potential energy stored by the capacitor is equal to the charge squared divided by 2 times the capacitance. So what we'll do is we will rearrange the equation and isolate Q. We can do that by first multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 times the capacitance, so we cancel it out on the right-hand side. We would then take the square root of both sides so that we can isolate Q. And now we can plug in the known values. The capacitance was in microfarads, so we'll have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 6 when we plug in. And then again, we know the initial stored potential energy was 0.5 joules. And when we work that out, we can see that the initial charge on the capacitor is 0 0.000, oh, no, too many zeros, 001, and then this is charge, so it's going to be in coulombs. So this would be the initial charge. We can put a little subscript 0 to denote that that is the initial charge. That is the correct answer to part A of the problem. Let's take a look at part B. It says, what is the current through the resistor when the discharge starts? So the capacitor begins to discharge, and it starts to send current through the resistor. And we can look at the equation that governs the discharging of a capacitor. This is the equation right here. And to get the current, we might recall that the current is equal to the rate of change in the charge. So in other words, we could say that current is the derivative of charge with respect to time. So what we're going to have to do is take our equation for charge, and we're going to have to differentiate it. So it would look like this. We would say that the current is equal to the derivative of our charge equation, which is Q0 times E to the negative T over R times C. And this is going to be done with respect to time. So that looks a little daunting, but it's calculus, and it involves the derivative of an exponential function. And we may just step aside for a moment and talk about this negative t over rc. You might want to rewrite that as negative 1 over rc multiplied by t. Because when we go to take the derivative, r and c are constants, and negative 1 over a constant would itself be a constant. So when you differentiate this term, you would basically keep the constant and then multiply by the derivative of t, which is just 1. So it's just a little easier to see that derivative of this term by rewriting it as done on the screen here. So let's continue taking the derivative here. Q0 was the initial charge. That had a constant value. So that could be factored to the outside of the derivative. So now we have Q0 multiplied by the derivative of e to the negative 1 over rc times time. And then again, we're differentiating with respect to time. Now, from your calculus studies, you may recall that when you take the derivative of that exponential term, the one with the e in it, you kind of do two things. You keep or sort of rewrite the exponential term. So we're going to rewrite the entire exponential term like that. And then the chain rule sort of kicks in here, and you multiply by the derivative of the power. As stated earlier, the derivative of this power term, this negative 1 over rc times t, is just negative 1 over rc times 1. So that's going to be negative 1 over rc. So that would be the derivative. We can sort of clean it up a little bit here. We can multiply the initial charge by this term right here. So you'd multiply the q0 by 1. So that would be negative, and you'd have q0 on top. On bottom would be rc, and then multiplied by the exponential term. Now, in a lot of cases, the negative sign in front is omitted because all the negative sign is telling us is that the charge on the capacitor is decreasing. So we are basically going to omit that fact by dropping the negative sign and just rewriting the current without it. So just make sure you drop that negative sign. This would tell us the current that's flowing through the circuit. And we wanted to calculate that current when the discharging starts. So when the discharging starts, then time is equal to zero. So we're going to fill in zero for time. 
Now, if you study this carefully, let's look at this term. If time is zero, then this power is zero and e to the zero is just one. So we end up getting sort of the initial current is equal to the initial charge over RC. Now we calculated the initial charge already. That was the 0 0.001 coulombs. And then we're gonna divide by the resistance. Now the resistance was given, but it was given in mega ohms. So you gotta take that resistance, multiply it by 10 to the power of six. So it'd be one times 10 to the power of six ohms. And then the capacitance was given as the one microfarad. So that's one times 10 to the minus six farads. Again, a conversion into a standard unit. Now, when we multiply this out, we will see that the initial current is 0 0.001 amps. So this would be the correct answer for part B of the question. In part C, it says, find an expression that gives as a function of time, the potential difference V sub C across the capacitor. Okay, so we're gonna take our discharging equation and we're going to sort of convert it into a electric potential equation. We can do that because we recall that the charge on a capacitor is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. If you divide both sides of that equation by C, you would, you would get Q over C is just equal to V. So how does that help us? Well, if we come in here, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by the capacitance C. And as just demonstrated, this Q divided by C becomes the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. We'll throw a little subscript C on there just to denote capacitor. And now we have Q over C, excuse me, Q naught over C, multiplied by E to the negative T divided by RC. And then we're going to plug in values again. We know the initial charge was determined earlier. That was 0 0.001 coulombs. We have the capacitance. And then this term R times C, can't remember if we got that already. Maybe we didn't, but that's okay because we can plug in the values for R times C. So we're going to go ahead and fill in everything. Okay, so we've plugged in the known values. We can simplify this by dividing that leading coefficient. That's going to give you 1,000 volts. And then when we multiply these guys here, that's just going to turn out to be one. And that's a time constant, so it's one second. So you would have e to the power of negative t over one second. This would be the equation that the question is seeking. It's the potential across the plates of the capacitor as a function of time. So that's it for part C. We can move to part D, which asks for the expression that gives the potential difference V sub R across the resistor. Well, we know from Ohm's law that the potential difference across a resistor is equal to the current flowing through it multiplied by the resistance value. And since that's the potential difference across the resistor, we can put a little r right here. Now, the current as a function of time was developed earlier. Somewhere in our story here, we should have the current as a function of time. Yes, it's right here. So this expression was the current as a function of time. We're going to go ahead and plug that in for I in the equation written below. And we've bracketed that just so it sort of stands out. Now this can be simplified. You have a resistance in the denominator, and then later we're multiplying by a resistance in the numerator. Those resistance values will actually cancel out. So we can knock that out of our equation. And then we can fill in all of the known values. Again, we know the initial charge on the capacitor. We know the capacitance. We, we know the resistance. So we're going to fill in those values. And this is very, very similar to what we've already done. If we divide that leading coefficient, once again, we're going to get 1,000 volts. And then we have E to the negative. And then we have time. And then underneath time, we multiply that. We get one second. So this would be the correct answer for part D of the question. We can look at the final part of the question here, which wants the expression that gives as a function of time the rate at which thermal energy is produced in the resistor. The rate at which thermal energy is produced in the resistor. So that's the power developed through the resistor. And the power developed through the resistor, we can maybe put an R there, is going to be the current squared times the resistance. And as before, for the expression or for the current, excuse me, we're going to substitute in the expression for current 
that we had developed earlier, which is that one right there, the one without the negative sign. So there is our expression. Now again, we're plugging in values and we can plug in the charge initial, which is that 0 0.001 coulombs. Underneath this, remember that R times C was just one. So we can call that one, and that's a time constant, so that's one second. We're gonna end up squaring that, but then we're also squaring the exponential term. So let's look at this very carefully. When we square the exponential term, we're going to end up multiplying the power by the other power. It's sort of a power to power rule. Remember that when you sort of square an exponential, you multiply the power. So a basic example, if you had x to the fifth squared, you would multiply those to get x to the 10. So we are multiplying. So it looks like we're going to get a negative 2t over rc. But again, rc is just one second. So you can fill in one second right off the bat here. And then we're multiplying by the resistance, which is that one times 10 to the power of sixth ohms. That was the one mega ohm. Now you could pick up a calculator and you can multiply this term here by the resistance. And when you do that, you should get one. So that's going to give you one watt, since we're determining power, one watt multiplied by e to the negative 2t over one second. This would be the answer to part e of the question. And then we might provide one more commentary. A lot of you probably noticed that when we were dividing by one second, it wouldn't change the value of the power. So for example, negative 2t divided by one is just negative 2t. So you could write this as just negative 2t. That would be fine. And then the same thing with the other answers. Those were times divided by one. So you can knock out that one, that would become e to the negative t. And then same thing over here, we were dividing by one. So that would be just e to the negative t.